अरुणा करुणा तरंगताक्षी धृतपाशांगुश पुष्पाणचापिरावृता मयूख अहम विभाव Namaste. So today we're going to do only two namas, but the second one especially is a big one, <laughs> Kundalini. So let's get started. Nama one hundred and nine, Maha Saktihi. Maha means festivals. And asaktihi means great liking. She has a great liking for festivities. Here, festival means her union with Shiva. Festivities are of two kinds: one that is celebrated internally, associated with mind, and another is external worship, associated with body. If this nama is interpreted based on Saundarya Lahari nine. Mahing Muladhare, the earth is placed in Muladhar. Then it means only internal worship, worshiping her subtlest form, Kundalini. She likes internal worship. Maha means supremacy. A means on all sides, and Sakti means supreme. Her supreme power is spread everywhere. In this context. This nama means that she is the supreme power. So her very name, Lalita, means playful. She likes to play. She likes festivities. Actually, she likes drama of all kinds. Huh? That's why we see this world is so full of drama. Well, what does drama mean? It means suffering. So. There's only one kind of drama which is not suffering, and that is the pageantry and entertainment of festivals. When the greatest thing in the universe, Shakti, is celebrated, both internally and externally, this is a great festival. So therefore, the recitation of her names. Or her mantras, or the bijas that refer to her, either externally or internally, is like a great festival, and this mood of festivity, of celebration, carries along with the sound vibrations that represent her names and her different qualities in the bijas. Now, of course, the internal celebration. Is much much superior to the externals, but in the first stage of karma yoga, one cannot comprehend the inner worship. Therefore, so many external rituals are supplied in the tantras and other scriptures to get the worshipper or the aspirant for liberation started on the path of celebrating her. You see, so because the great majority of aspirants are in the lowest stage, even though they may pretend to be higher, they get hung up on external rituals, external designations, and so on. So this simply points out where they really are. Now, when this celebratory mood becomes internalized, when this serving mood. And particularly the enjoyment of the serving mood in a particular taste or bhakti rasa, when that becomes internalized, it becomes spontaneous, and this is bhakti. So bhakti is not something that you can make to happen, but it's something that arises spontaneously upon attainment of the higher karmic states. When one has solved all the major problems of life and is ready to go on, 
and love the supreme. Now the next name, 110, Kundalini. She is in the form of a three and a half turn coiled snake in Muladhara Chakra. Her subtlest form is described in this Nama. Her subtler form, Kamakala, Nama 322, is also described in a single Nama. But the Vach Devis used Namas 13 to 54 to describe her subtle form. This also goes to prove the importance of internal worship or meditation over the external rituals. The vital energy of prana is called kundalini. This lies in the muladhara chakra, in the midst of the fire that keeps the biological body warm. Any modification in the intensity of this fire causes sickness. The sound of the kundalini can be heard by anyone. If one closes both his ears tightly, he can listen to a hissing sound, the sound of kundalini from within. The base chakra is a triangle where itcha, jnana, and kriya shaktis, desire, knowledge, and action, form the three sides. From these three shaktis, potencies, the sound of aung, a, u, and ng, is generated. So the kundalini lives within every body. Everyone has access directly to this form of the goddess. So this uh, underscores the importance of the higher aspects of yoga beyond asana, pranayana also regulates this energy. Uh, and Shakti approves of this. Now you might say the exercises of pranayama are too difficult or too dangerous because if done wrongly, they can prove dangerous. But actually, if we simply meditate in the proper way, we will get the same result and this, will be, uh, this information will be given later on. So what does it mean to have the goddess of the universe within one's own body? It means she dreams us, she lives as us. Everything that we could call myself, up to and including consciousness, is actually her. So this is one of the functions of maya or illusion, to make us think that which is actually her is myself. Continue, Yoga Vasishta, the compendium of teachings of sage Vasishta to Lord Rama. In Nirvana Prakarana, the last of six sections, talks about Kundalini. Sage Vasishta says to Lord Rama, like the coiled body of a serpent when it sleeps, like a plantain flower, it is exceedingly delicate within hissing like an angry female serpent, causing fluctuations in the mind. All other nadis are connected with this. This becomes purified only by the rays of jnana, or knowledge. Thus, this shakti rejoices in the name of puryashtaka. Should the upward and downward actions of this kundalini shakti be arrested by the control of prana, and this prana be made to rest in the heart, diseases will never affect those who have such control. So one can hear the hissing of the snake of Kundalini simply by stopping the ears and listening inside. This technique was taught to me many years ago. Actually, I came upon it spontaneously, but then I was initiated formally into it uh, by one of the gurus of the Radha Swami uh, disciple succession. So we can understand that this is a very important practice, listening within and also looking within. Uh, just as the eyes open externally to see outward, 
Huh? If you close the outward lids, they can open internally and you can see the energy flowing within. Now, if this inner light and inner sound ceases, one is very close to death. So this is how you can know when death is approaching. There are so many things about this. So the practice of pranayama or any form of valid meditation will eventually still the upward and downward oscillations of this prana, this kundalini. And when that happens, enlightenment dawns in the heart. More about Puryashtaka. As told by sage Vasishta to Lord Rama in Yoga Vashishta 6.5, Brahman, who is without beginning or end and is the seed of the universe, becoming differentiated is jiva, soul. Subjecting itself to the idea of separateness, it becomes ahankar, ego. With manana, contemplation, it becomes manas, mind. With the certainty of intelligence, it becomes buddhi, intellect. And then the five tanmatras, sound, etc., through indriyas, sensory organs. With the thought of the body, it becomes the body itself. With the thought of a vessel, it becomes the vessel. A form, subtle body, having such a nature is called the puryashtaka, body, or eight constituents of the body. The eight constituents are mind, ego, intellect, sound, sight, smell, taste, and touch. The last five together known as the tanmatras, or sense objects. So this passage details how the Brahman becomes the individual living being. Step by step, Brahman differentiates itself and then becomes identified with the body, senses, and sense objects. So in this way, she, huh, the goddess Lalita, appears to be one's self because she is the energy of Brahman differentiated from Brahman. The difference between Shiva and Shakti, remember, is that Shiva is the energetic and Shakti is the energy itself. So when that energy becomes differentiated from the energetic, its source, that becomes Shakti. So that means the whole world, the body, the senses, the mind, even the false ego is actually her. And now we're going to finish up with a reading from a great master, one of the greatest masters ever. Kanchi Paramacharya Sri Chandra Shekharendra Saraswati Mahapariyaval observed in his magnum opus, Voice of God, the following about Kundalini Yoga. Kundalini Yoga is not the only path available to the seeker. Choose any path other than it, adhere to it with a one-pointed mind and with faith and sincerity. As you advance to a high state on this path, your breathing will change automatically and it will be similar to that of one practicing yoga. You may not even be aware of it. The breathing will change on its own. And after saying that one's breath will undergo modifications, he concludes, the movement of breath will impinge on the nerves in the roof of our head and touching the feet of Ambal, referring to Shakti, create a flow of ambrosia. Even in worldly life, when we are in ecstasy of delight, our breathing stops and we faint. In this there is reflection of the emotion experienced by us during kumbhaka, holding the breath. During this time we exclaim, ah, I feel cool in the crown of my head. This also means that a tiny droplet of the ambrosia has trickled down on the nerves in the crown of the head. 
I have said this to show that even by following the path of devotion, you can have inward experience of sublime nature. So this is the great Acharya speaking. And we can understand from him that any path which cultivates extreme devotion will also lead to meditation because the mind can only be fixed by interest, by beauty, by contemplation of the sublime. So when we contemplate the sublime nature of the goddess, whether it be through yogic disciplines or through the attraction, the natural attraction of extreme love and affection, either way, it leads the mind to stillness. And when that stillness occurs, that is the union of Shiva and Shakti. And the nectar of that union then can trickle down through the nerves in the Sahasrara and through the nectar chakra. Huh? <laughs> and that's one, when one feels heavenly ecstasy. And this is the result of the proper practice of any kind of yoga. Aum Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.